Okay. Um, you, um, so are there any questions about this, uh, this desire, I'm sorry, this encouragement to persevere in the face of this adversity? Because, again, I say that um, it is virtually Im- impossible uh, to, to not grow weary when we, fa- when we are facing so many different types of adversities at the same time. It, it, it is virtually impossible for for us not for your for your back not to be tired from carrying these burdens uh, of adversities during this period of time. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, Pastor Ron, uh, I just just support what you're saying. I mean, it's uh, I think it's timely. I think. Uh, I know I've gotten a little weary, and that's, uh, as you say, understandable. Uh, I don't hope, like to say, I haven't wavered in in my faith and and and, and belief that we're on the right track. Uh, I'm also, though, reminded, and this has me a little excited. Uh, I'm reminded of the scripture that when Israel had wandered in the wilderness and they were about to cross the Jordan and it was observed that we've never been this way before. And if you think about uh, our thoughts and prayers and the direction we have uh, moved in, the earth has never been this way before. So I'm excited about that. That's a positive thing. the other thing to keep in mind is a lot of these events are happening not to open our eyes, but to open the eyes of other people, other people out there uh, uh, to, to see the inhumane things, whether or not it's from the shooting from the police or random shootings or uh, still from the virus or the, the treatment of uh, Asian people or the rhetoric that comes out of uh, uh, the Capitol building and uh, people's lives are being open now. And, and that's, that's a, a tremendous thing. And I, I, uh, I just, I think you said it brilliantly. I just, I don't have a lot to add, but uh, I'm just kind of, you know, kind of excited because I think we have a, a major role in this and just, uh, Keep our eyes on open as to what to do next, or what uh, what 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 we should focus on next. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? And, and you're asking. Pastor. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say I was watching the closing arguments today uh, with the George Floyd um, trial, and people were asking me, "Well, Evelyn, what you think is going to happen?" I said. We don't need to shape it or form, you know, the outcome of of this trial. And I had to make sure that I was on track with that because it is, isn't it dependent upon us that this thing come out the way it should be? Well, actually, it isn't. Um, Mm -hmm. The the way it should come out is the way the universe desires it to come out. Okay. Okay. So, um... Any questions about that? And, and I just just to speak to that, the way the universe desires it to come out, because everything has is an action. So what, however it comes out, uh, you know, it, it works out for the betterment of man. It may not seem like that because of our limited view, uh, and, and sometimes I don't can't get past my frustration. Uh, example, when my, when my sister-in-law was sick, I could not get past my frustration until I was on the other side of it. And although I did not at first agree with the outcome, I could see what took place there. So that's the, the attitude, I guess, I'm, I'm learning to develop as all of these things happen. I'm, I'm trying to gain wisdom from it and... Uh, maybe to help in what we do on Saturdays, Sundays, and Mondays 
uh, use that wisdom to bring understanding to others and put things out there in the macro. So, yeah, there are things that have happened in the last couple of years that we don't necessarily agree with, but I hope that our vision is becoming clear as we see more and more people in the streets demonstrating and more and more compassion people are having for each other. Hopefully, uh, things are moving in that direction and, and uh, not only for us, but for a, a lot of other people as well. So I think what we see is people's eyes are being open and, and helping them to, to move in the direction of righteousness. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? That's what I want to say. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I just wanted to add one thing, too, because I like Evelyn. I was looking at the summation of the um, prosecution um, case today, and it made me feel it made me sad. It did. I'm not going to lie about it. It made me feel a different way, but I also knew that I needed to continue to watch that. And I began to, in all of the clips that were played over and over today, I looked at the police officer for the first time. I mean, I really looked at him. And I began to, for some reason, have this compassion in trying to understand where are you in your thinking that what, what is going through your mind now? What was going through your mind then? Do you, has anything changed for you? Yeah, I know your wife left you. I know you got divorced. I know you're no longer a police officer, all of these things. But what has transpired on the inside of you mm-hmm. and your innermost being? Has anything resonated on the inside of you that shows you that something needs to change? And I have been looking at the scripture and I was looking at the faint not part. If you faint not, what would cause me to feel like I'm in a position of needing or, or fainting? And what does fainting speak to? And as I was studying fainting, it, it didn't necessarily look like what I thought it was going to look like because it speaks of um, dissolving like a, a, a marriage or dissolving a connection. And, and when I began to look at this thing, I began to process it a little differently and began to realize I only feel like giving up when I disassociate and disconnect myself from whatever is going on and see it as something that I can't handle anymore and see it as something that's separate or a part or not a part of me and who I am. So I guess today I look at that police officer through the lens of being an extension of myself. And I began to think back to when I was working, I worked with one of my administrators who was a part of my administrative team. He and I, the two, I was the counselor. He was the principal for my grade. Every time he had to correct a student, his brother was a police officer. And he said to that child, every time, especially if it was a black male, could someone use the phone, please? Can you mute your phone, please? Every time he had to discipline a black male, he would always say out of the blue to this kid, my brother is a police officer and he has to risk his life every day when he goes to work because of people like you. And you need to get it together because you put him in danger. And then he would say, he would summarize his rant by saying there are two people in this world. I'm not going to ever let you talk back to a Miss Street, and that's Miss Smith and my mama. And he said that several times. And one day when none of the kids were around, I said, don't do that. First of all, don't find an excuse to be mean to the kids to mistreat them, and certainly don't pull my name into it as if though you're defending me and doing me a favor. But today I thought back to that conversation because, I thought about the man's wife, Chavin's wife. Um, She had to have known because at the end of the day, a husband goes home to his wife and he talks about his day. But she had to know his thoughts and feelings about this job long before that happened. But seeing that being put into action caused her to leave him. That reminded me that these conversations are taking place at home all the time. 
And by us standing in that gap and saying, no, we're putting in the macro loving kindness, peace, humanity's eyes being open, the compassion of the African, all of this we're putting into place. As a result of that, I could look at him today. I don't hate that man. I pity him, and I am praying that his eyes will be opening that no matter what the outcome of the verdict is, that his life will be changed and that he can never be so indifferent about snuffing out life ever again. And I looked at all of that, and that made me think about I cannot disconnect because that makes me weary. I have to see this as an extension of myself and deal with it from a trans from the from the standpoint of understanding. Um, we are the ones that's responsible for the change that's occurring. And you all have heard me say so much about the massacre in um, the mass shooting in Rock Hill. I read the letter from the family, the pastor last night, and as I looked at that letter that they wrote to quiet the community. I saw evidence, I see evidence every time I read that. I see the evidence of the change that we are bringing about as a result of doing what we do. And that in in and of itself gives me the confidence to continue to do what we're supposed to do. It gives me the strength, it, it, it renews and excites me to that I am now seeing the evidence of everything that we have been, we've been standing in the gap for. It really is happening. Just don't take my eye off the prize and, 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 and get into hatred or get into anger and get into all of these other emotions that's going to cause me to miss what's really happening around us and what we really are bringing about as a result of standing there in, in the gap and being loving kindness and, and opening that up so that it is available to all who are willing to accept it. That's all I wanted to say. But Kathy pretty well said what a, some of what I was thinking when I, I had to pull myself away from the TV today because when I kept seeing it over and over and over again, and and then when he started calling on his mother, that that really got me. And I said, uh, I got to get out of here. And, you know, I went to another room so that I couldn't sit there and just stare at it because it was really, in my mind, I was saying the same thing, wonder what he's thinking. You know, and and when he go to sleep, will he see this for the rest of his life? You know, him with his neck on that man, and and then him saying he can't breathe, and and then it kept coming back to me the love and kindness too. And I say, well, I can't sit here, and I'm I'm arguing back with the TV because they kept showing it over and over again. And I say, no, I've got to pull away because this is really getting next to me. And then when uh, um. I got a phone call just before we got on was telling me about one of the ladies at our church, her grandson got killed in a road rage, and how she was hurting yesterday and telling me, please pray for my grandson, and saw her hurt, and I can imagine what she was going through. Then all this, you know, all these things just like coming up at one time, and then they got this thing they're sending out now about on the 24th, don't ladies don't go out your door because they're calling it rape day, and and uh, women, they catch women out, they're going to be raped, you know, and all this stuff is, you know, I know we have to to watch, you know, be watchful at all times, but all this stuff is like it just balling all up right to, you know, one right behind the other, and then the, all the mother shootings, and it just, like Ron say, it kind of get next to you sometimes, and you just have to pull away, you have to pull away from that TV, and and you have to just get somewhere where you can just meditate and not listen to it and watch it all the time. I'm I think one of the things we've all described is uh, all of these things are taking us to a deeper place, a deeper level inside of us. and. Not only is it opening the eyes of other people, as as uh, several people have already mentioned, but it's also uh, leading us to prayer and deeper meditation. So I think we kind of all, uh, these conversations are good because it helps us support each other and uh, 
see that we are headed in the right direction just just reinforces that. Hi, this is Mary. I was, I was just thinking about um, in our prayer, our Father, uh, the Lord's Prayer, rather, Thy will be done. We are all connected. We're a part of the universe. And there are certain things that have to happen in order for more of us to be aware of how connected we are. When, George, when I saw the killing of George Floyd, there was a deep crying, a deep gut feeling that I just the cry, the tears came from the innermost part of my being. I hadn't cried like that since my mom passed. It was such a deep thing. And then a boy spoke to me and said he had to die. I was like, what? He had to die. So... It's like in order for things to start getting in line to where it needs to be for for more people to see the glory of God and for us to reflect God in our lives, things have to happen. And we have to trust that God is in charge because we say we trust him. And we are his creation, created in his image. So we have to trust him. So looking at those Things on TV and stuff, can't look at it because they bring tears to my eyes. But then I remember, Lord, I trust you. I trust you no matter what comes my way. A couple of months ago, I had an incident with a medical condition, and I found myself not able to get a grip on it, and I pray, and it still, still, the more I moved around, the more frustrated I got because the vision was so messed up that I couldn't see. I went without driving for two months. But then I kept, I centered myself, your will, Father, your will. And you know what I need, so I just thank you for it. So as we continue to, to grow and, and come into the full knowledge of who we are in him and to reflect him upon the earth, then we will see that things are changing. Some people may not even be affected by this. You look at the riot in, in, at this capital and there are other people that still felt justified in what happened, and it doesn't change their heart. But guess what? There was enough people where things are going to start happening. We're going to have to continue to trust God. We have to let him do what needs to be done. All these forces, all these things have to come in place in order for his will to be done. Like the Apostle Paul says, we look into the glass dimly. But one day, one day, we're going to see clearly, and we're going to understand why everything is happening the way it is. We just can't figure it out because all we can see is what's in front of us. But one day, hallelujah, we're going to see it, y'all. And when we see it, we can rejoice. We can go ahead and rejoice because the victory is already won. God has already got this thing worked out. Just have to stay fast. And like the pastor says, do not grow weary in well-doing. Yeah, we're going to get tired. Yeah, we're going to get frustrated. But we keep moving. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Thank y'all. Thank you. Anyone else? I um. I've heard everything that's been said, and um, in hearing it, it's resonating with me, and. It makes it made me think about um, prayer itself. And when Ron talked about it pushes us to a deeper state of meditation, um, it also puts us in a place of con- being con- um, continuous, being in a state of continuous uh, meditation, which means focus on the positive, on the desires of our heart, which is um, loving kindness for throughout humanity. Um, the I I I, I listen at um, meetings that are open with prayer, and I, I listen at um, services that are open with prayer, and I never ever read where Jesus 
open anything with prayer. And it dawned on me that um, this thing called prayer is simply a part of the program and not a sincere effort to communicate with the universe or with our creator. It dawned on me that the reason we can truthfully say that we've done all of this praying and nothing changed is because the nature of the praying that was being done was not predicated on on what the scripture has to say in regards to prayer, this meditation, which we have translated as prayer. Um, it is my belief that our lives must not just be predicated on prayer or meditation. It must be in a meditative state uh, continuously. And, and, and the imperativeness of that comes through to me uh, loud and clear because without being in a continuous state, um, we would live in a continuous state of, of frustration and doubt and, and, and weariness. Um, I I often have to um, remind myself of who I am and remind myself of um, what we believe and what we know the truth to be. And there are times when that struggle pushes me to call someone and bounce things off of them and talk to them. And, 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 and I have, um, just like anyone else, uh, the need to hear repeated to me sometimes those things that 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 I have taught and I know they are true, but you just you need to hear them sometimes. And, and um, uh, this this um, the state that that we see our society in, and and we we know that as Ron stated earlier that um, these things are happening because there are people who need to see uh, what's really going on behind uh, the scenes. Um, let's, uh, I want to approach something. There, Mary said that he had to die, and he did. She's absolutely right. But I want to take that a step further. I believe that there are people who are born in for the very purpose of dying in that manner. I am saying to you that be it George Floyd or Philando Castile, whomever it is, I believe that the, their life journey carried them to that place to die. And that death became a sacrifice for the purpose of opening the eye of humanity. And then you say, but what about those who died and they did not get this kind of publicity and they did not get these, these people did not demonstrate like this? Well, there is something called a preponderance of evidence. Um, there had to be a preponderance of death. Uh, in order for it to reach a critical state, if some, if there were, if there were mass shootings once a year, no one would really pay them any attention. But with there being mass shootings more than one in a day, now it's getting uh, the scrutiny that it deserves, so that it can be ended. So it, I do believe that there are people who are brought into this earth, who come into this earth, uh, and at a point, the the level of of anger or the level of discomfort that is brought by X number of events taking place reaches a crescendo, and it is at that point that we begin to see people become more outspoken, more active in terms of moving in a direction that's going to change things, and and, and I don't in any way uh, discount the grief that's involved uh, in these things happening. Without grief and without pain, there will be no change. 
we have emotions for a reason. We have uh, empathy for a reason. And and when the 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 empathy of humanity reaches that uh, a point um, that is determined by the universe itself, it is at that point that we will begin to not only experience change, but also an outpouring of loving kindness uh, towards each other and a recognition uh, that we indeed are all one. Um, any questions or comments about that? I just wanted to uh, emphasize uh, for everyone uh, listening, but you did uh, mention it as well, the, that when you mentioned the death bringing uh, change, that you were talking about a huge infusion of love and kindness and that opportunity for many lives and hearts to be uh, transformed in a mighty way. So what, not so, but I just want to uh, emphasize that aspect when in regard uh, to change. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. And, and that has always been the case. It has always uh, been through uh, death that uh, change comes. Uh, I, I think we we talk about it, but we don't really, you know, give much credence to it. The death uh, that Jesus uh, endured uh, brought about change, and the death of Muhammad brought about change. The death of Mary Evans brought about change. Uh, these the, the the things that we the, we call them death, but I see them as seeds um, for the uh, enhancement of humanity, and and, and seeds that that go through these changes um, for the purpose of growth. I also see that these who exit the bodies uh, in this manner, that their energy uh, is gathered in such a manner that it will at some point become a, become a what? become a, um, well, we'll, we'll exert rather um, so much pressure on the emotions of, of those who are in these bodies until we begin uh, to, to fight for change. We begin to do whatever is necessary to bring about change in the earth. And, and, and this in itself, when you, when you, when you battle and you see the results of your battling, um, it, 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 you, you will see that it's all worth it. And I do think that that's pretty much uh, what Paul was uh, writing about in that strip in Galatians uh, about um, uh, don't, don't diminish your belief, hold on to what you know the truth to be. Uh, don't don't um, disconnect yourself mentally or emotionally from what's going on around you. Because the day is going to come uh, when you will be able uh, uh, to um, experience the uh, the very the very um, hope, the very um, love and kindness that you are seeking uh, to experience throughout man of uh, humanity. Questions or comments? <laughs> want to make a comment I was looking at the news the other day and it was this black guy down in Columbia and he went he was walking through this neighborhood and uh, a white guy uh, came up to him and asked him why was he in that neighborhood and he told him he had seen him come through there another time and the guy told him he lived in that neighborhood and his wife said well why don't we follow you home and he began to push this guy and tell him to get out this neighborhood he didn't belong there and it just it made me feel like 
the same thing with Trayvon Martin or Amar Aubrey passing through a neighborhood and you are told that you're not welcome in that neighborhood. But it, it made me think if you was to walk up and tell that man that he's a racist, the first thing he would tell you is, I'm not a racist. Oh, no. But you can't see it. And I just wonder, is the universe opening up to where all of this is going to be, well, it's being revealed because the layers are, you know, being folded back because people have got to see stuff like this in order to recognize that, you know, we think that we live in a society now where it doesn't matter the color of your skin. And I used to, you know, you would always say police are not there to protect black people. And it's just like it's hitting home now. And I just wanted to make that, you know, aware because when it gets to the point that you can't walk through a neighborhood, there's something wrong with this picture. Well, it's been like that, and we're seeing it now. And and the thing the thing that gets me about it um, is that um, there are those who think that is okay. Uh, this guy is no longer a drill sergeant in the military, the one of, um, that you're speaking about. Uh, he was a drill sergeant, and my my question is, how did he treat the uh, trainees that he had under his care? Because when you're in basic training, the drill sergeant pretty much owns your life, and, and I, I just wonder how he how he treated them. Um. I um, I saw that, and I know some of the people who are took an active role in making sure uh, that this story um, became a national story. Um, this is one of the things that get me about that is the reason that man did that. You have to go back to the root of it. Uh, the reason there are gated communities is because the gates were there to keep us out. Uh, so we, you wouldn't stroll through the communities, and now we fight to get into a gated community. Uh, the root of it has always been what that what that white dude did to that young man. Uh, now, what has come out uh, as a result of that is that this young man... Uh, has some mental issues, and he has been institutionalized uh, since this happened. So there is going to, um, it should have been held to pay for what he did to him um, based upon the reason that he did it, but more so because he was dealing with a disabled person. And um, and um, it is my understanding uh, that this man knew it. And it may very well have been the reason he targeted him, because he, he, he saw him as an easy target, at least he thought he was anyway. But once again, who comes to uh, the, the rescue? African women came to the rescue, recorded it, defended the young man, stayed there until the police got there, and pushed it even further, because the police was not going to do anything about it. So uh, thank you. Uh, for that uh, observation, Linda Kay. Anyone else? Okay. Um, I heard a terminology, the universe opening up. Or can, can I hear a little bit more? Well, not a little bit, but as much as time will allow to talk about what does that mean and how does that look about the universe opening up? The, well, um, let me see. Anyone want to do that? Want to talk about that? Ron, Sheldon, Kathy, Kathy, uh, Linda, Barbara, Audrey, somebody. Okay. okay. I, 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 I'll I'll start, <laughs> and uh, others can uh, pick up. Um, the, the universe uh, open up um, refers to. So first of all, let's uh, go back just a little bit when we talked about uh, death 
And uh, we talked and Pastor Richard mentioned um, a lot of the people who have passed, uh, I mean, yeah, transitioned in the past. We as human beings look at death or this concept of death differently from what Jesus ever talked about. Jesus did not look at human existence as persisting and then suddenly ending and that being just death, okay. dead as in nothing else um, exists. So let's start off uh, uh, with that because I do understand when we talk about death, it can be uh, quite shocking if you're not used to looking at it in those terms. Now, in terms of the universe opening up, and it's the same thing that happened with uh, Jesus's death as well, um, even though we're not necessarily making a comparison here. It is a setting um, opportunity for a huge uh, transfusion of love in the world that can uh, impact a great number of people because people's are, uh, attention is suddenly focused and open up to that away from the mundane or how they will normally be uh, operating in everyday life. There is an opportunity because all of a sudden there is a, a, a questioning. There is a desire um, to both uh, experience and in a kind of way to be uh, different in, in, in a way. Um, and this is not necessarily something that's just identified, it's just something that is different and there's a, a pull and there's a this, this pull, this yearning on a macro uh, level. And what we mean by macro level, we just mean that there are a lot of people who are experiencing this particular thing, even if they can't describe it and don't even realize or understand what is uh, taking place. Um, it's the same thing kind of like when we talk about uh, or when anyone talks about all of a sudden something hit me, uh, so to speak. So with what is going on, um, and there's a lot that has transpired over the last year or so, was the opportunity for people to have a deeper, um, to go deeper within, uh, within themselves, uh, so to speak to question themselves, to become more intimate with themselves, have a deeper understanding, and to experience uh, more. That thing that we're talking about experiencing more is uh, the ultimate uh, love of the universe, which be the same thing that Jesus talked about when he was saying that me and my father are one and uh, uh, the kingdom. That's what it is that we're talking about in terms of the universe opening up. And of course, if you have uh, any further questions or comments, anyone, please uh, add on to it. Do you want to speak to that? So that's the same as with the situation with George Floyd, that, that the universe aligned itself, and there are a lot of people that was touched deeply by what they saw and wanted to move because there was a sense of compassion and love and wanting to do something other than just sit. Is yeah. that part of it? Yes, yeah. exactly. Okay. And in some cases, they may not have even been able to necessarily find something physically to do. However, in terms of like racial attitudes and just being closed off and things like that, all of a sudden those people um, had a, 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 a I, it's very hard to put in words, but an epiphany or a huge change of heart. And all of a sudden, the right. way that they viewed themselves and other changed immediately. Now, with what we're talking about, we a lot of times look at things uh, from the physical and see certain outcomes and try to judge them. But what we're talking about now is a deeper spiritual and soul thing and people being transformed from the inside. And it's not necessarily their actions are actually reflecting uh, that. But a lot of people, yes, were all of a sudden transformed in a mighty way with what that has happened and transpired over the past uh, year. Okay. All right. I guess. Makes sense. Um, if I can just add on to what Sheldon is saying, um, 
when you go back to what we talked about, about melanin, when a situation has happens like that, a lot of vibration is put out into the macro. Um, and lots of people absorb that vibration um, if they're if they're attuned to it, if they have a heart for for it, and, and that can be expressed as compassion or whatever. So a lot of people can absorb that energy. Um, so they feel so they feel it. Um, and also in that way the universe opens up. It's like the universe is pouring into you. Hmm. Okay. And, and and not only not only that I, I, I'm thinking of the scripture that talks about Jesus said about the sign of the times. We we, we look at the pandemic and the first thing uh, we saw was uh, fear. You know, everybody we, we we had never gone through anything like that. So naturally, you everyone was concerned. But if your eyes were open, you saw something. Mm -hmm. You saw. Uh, you, you you saw wild grizzly and polar bears coming and laying down with domestic animals. You saw lions coming out of the jungle and lying down in villages. You saw the ocean cleansing themselves. You saw the stars and the sky brighter than it's ever been. So all of these things took place and and, and maybe maybe we we noticed it at globally, hopefully, uh but all of that was telling us something. These, these, this is opportunity. And those vibrations that Audrey is talking about, even the animals felt it. All of, all of, of, of uh, everything that has life felt this. So this is the opportunity. In the midst of all of this seemingly darkness and uncertainty, there was clarity and, and opportunity for, for love and, and compassion. And uh, hopefully we, we, we are still grasping that, grasping that and taking advantage of that opportunity. Thank you all. Yes, Go ahead. No, I was just saying that's good. Thank you. I, that, yeah, that's clear now. And, and, and um, the universe itself, in the Aramaic, there's no difference than our womb and the universe or our father and the universe. There's no difference. So that's the source of it all, of everything that's loving kindness. Are there any other questions or comments about this? Or anything else for that matter? Hey, Rhea, this is Charles. Yes, sir. Uh, what scripture... That when I think Jesus was talking about, I don't know who was talking about it. The rumors of you're gonna hear rumors of war, and 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 Matthew. you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it's somewhere. I think Matthew 24, 25. I'm not sure. Uh, uh huh. You have to ask somebody else when it comes to quoting, you know, knowing exactly what scriptures are. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I was seeing and what I was hearing everybody was saying, it, I mean, every, so much stuff has happened now, it seems like we're, we're in, a, in a war. But in a, it, 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 let me back you up. Let me back you up. It's okay. Not, not seemingly. We are definitely in a war. That's, okay. That's why mm -hmm. that seems so difficult to live every day for a lot of people to get through this. What they're warring with is that the adversities that have become even stronger. Um, if one thing for you to work on a job for, for $7.25 an hour, $9 an hour, whatever, and then all of a sudden a pandemic hits, and you don't have that job anymore, or uh, you don't uh, you don't have the insurance, so you don't get a COVID test, or you get sick and you don't emergency room because you don't have insurance and you know you can't afford to. So these the the, the um, 
pandemic itself intensified the burdens that people were already carrying. So that Uh in itself became uh, more of a war than anything else that they had been facing. So it's not as if it is a war. It is most definitely a war that's being waged. Okay? Thank you, man. Yes, sir. Anyone else? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, meaning that we we have been fighting this battle in our religious settings. We've been fighting it in our governmental settings. The carnality of the the, the carnalness of what of, of our weapons have been this thing that we call altar call and this thing that we call uh, um, church services where people um, preach at you and not to you, where where you're given the same messages over and over again with no understanding of what the Scripture is being said. These are carnal weapons that have no effect on spiritual issues. Uh, Petitioning the government, uh, put more faith in in voting than you do in, in what the Scriptures are actually telling us. That's what we are being taught. This, that's the carnality of the weapons that the, uh, the, that we have been using in this warfare, and that is the reason the war has become more and more intense as opposed to uh, 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 subsiding. The, the, the weapons of our warfare must be spiritual, and, and, and the spirituality of our weapons are our words, our beliefs, our desires. The, the spirituality uh, uh, of, of, the, um, of these weapons is, is, is heartfelt and, has, and, and, and they are seated uh, in the depths of our soul. And, and anyone who, who, who seeks to, to wage war in, uh, um, against these, these principalities with our minds and with our intellect is always going to lose, and they will always strengthen those principalities. However, when we use um, the weapons that we are in, in terms of understanding how Jesus waged war, understanding how the prophets of old, how they waged war, it is at that time we will begin to see uh, a victory. It was when we will begin to see a, a subsiding of these wars that have been raging for generations. We have been looking to the wrong sources for our deliverance and for our power. The prophets of old have always shared with us how we are to wage these warfares. One of the problems we've had is that we've not even paid that much attention to any of the prophets. Jesus referenced the prophets often and and how uh, Abraham and the prophets longed to see his coming. What was he talking about? Jesus was talking about those who came before him who were speaking about what was to come if men did not change their attitudes and their directions in life. Uh, keep in mind, uh, that Jesus, um, and we said this the other day, was a, man, a melanated man. He was of African descent. And so are all of the prophets, every single prophet, from Abraham forward and before Abraham. Every one of them are African. And, and every one of them saw what was to come. And we... We have been so caught up on, on a, a, a religion that is far into the scriptures and listening to, pro, to, uh, to people tell us what prophets said uh, and, 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 and deeming those prophets to be uh, prophets uh, whose lips who lip they put words on. We are the ones who, who have to look at the true nature of what's being said. There is no way um, 
that the prophets of old would have ever, ever uh, 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 spoken to us about going to Caesar uh, to to get from Caesar uh, our freedoms. There is no way that the prophets of old would have told us uh, that our freedom, that our uh, that that love and kindness is going to come through having ecumenical church services. There is no way that the prophet would have told us that we're going to have integrated service at Easter and segregated service for the rest of the year, and that's how we're going to uh, 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 instill love and kindness in the heart of mankind. It doesn't work that way. Uh, The prophets of old would have told us it is not about... um, the congregating of yourselves together. It's not about the coming together. It's about what happens when you come together. It's not about some man standing on an, uh, in a pulpit in front of you uh, saying things to you that doesn't make sense and have you afraid to ask questions about it. It's not about somebody guilting you into coming to a service that, that, that has no power whatsoever and and, and, and encouraging you to continue to do the same thing, even though the same wars, the, the same battles you are fighting year in and year out, generation after generation. These prophets would have said to you, it is time for you to look unto the hills from which cometh your help. What he's saying is, look to, the, the look to a wound. Look, look inside of yourself and, and, and see See the power that you are. Understand the nature of your creation, that you are Elohim, that you are no different than the one who created you, and that your humanness cannot change, uh, cannot change the trajectory of this life, of this world, of this earth. There is no healing to be found in the humanness of you. There is no healing to be found in your intellect. It is all in the spiritual nature of your being. It is the essence of who you are that brings the healing. When Jesus said to the centurion, I don't have to come. No, I'm sorry. When the centurion said to Jesus, you don't have to come to my house. You are a man of authority. All you have to do is speak the word, and it will be done. That still applies today. We don't have to show up in the physical. We we don't have to be in that physical place for change to take place. Why? Because we are, we are spiritual agents who are equipped to create as we speak and, 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 and to, to bring into existence a, 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 a world order that is beneficial to all of humanity, and the power is not centered in the hands of a few, but the power is, it is, is disseminated by the many. And in doing so, it is, it is done in such a manner that it brings stability to, hum, to, to mankind. And in doing so, uh, it does things like Ron mentioned earlier. It begins to cleanse the ocean, it heals the earth. Uh, it, it ceases the, the, the it, it eases the pain of the earth, and it wipes away the tears of the earth. And in doing so, it brings civility even to the beasts of the field. It, even though it doesn't appear to be so because of the bestiality of, hum, of, man, of some men in the earth, it, when we do this, it would even bring civility to them. Those who were in that capital, uh, uh, those are the ones who need our love. Uh, those are the ones who, who need to understand uh, the power of love, and those are the ones uh, uh, of whom the scriptures speak when it says that, uh, love covers a multitude of sin. Love covers a multitude of entanglements, the entanglement of misogyny, of racism, the entangle, uh, entanglement of, uh, of xenophobia, the entanglement of greed, the entanglement uh, of, 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 of stealing, uh, of, of robbing people of their, of their self-identity. All of these entanglements are, are the entanglements that men are, uh, find themselves involved in, and and they are only freed from them by love itself, and 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 that's who we are, and these are the principles that were.
taught by the prophets of old, and they were brought to a head uh, uh, in the heart of Jesus and, and from his lips. But they, Jesus and the prophets of old that we are taught about are not the only ones who taught about this loving kindness. So did Buddha, so did Confucius, uh, 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 so did Muhammad. All of these men, or all of these prophets of old, pointed to one thing and one thing only. Become the light. Recognize that you are the light. And it is the light that brings order to this universe, and it is the light that pierces the darkness of the hearts of men and bring those men to their knees, to their knees with their heads lifted up to the heels from which all of their help comes. And, and, and that is speaking of looking deep into the universe, seeking the infusion of power that is necessary to bring us together as one. Any questions or comments? No questions, no comments. Uh, I was letting anyone who wanted to comment, comment. Uh, uh, yes, uh, it was mentioned earlier asking about, um, uh, and I'm going to tie into what Pastor Richard was just talking about, the uh, outcome of the trial in terms of the outcome that we wanted. And Pastor Richard mentioned that we're not concerned with the outcome of the trial. And what he meant by that was that we're actually, we're concerned about the outcome upon the world and the hearts of man um, being transformed as a result of whatever takes place um, with the outcome of, of the trial. Also, uh, it's been mentioned several times um, uh, tonight, um, Our Father's Prayer, um, talking about that womb, uh, which is the first word of the uh, Our Father's uh, Prayer, and also mentioned that um, really the word prayer is uh, meditation. And uh, Jesus was saying, essentially, not this is how you pray, but more so this is how you meditate. And so in context with what we've been talking about, what Pastor Richard just talked about, I wanted to read um, the Our Father's Prayer um, from a couple of uh, Eric Meg uh, translations. Um, we can definitely talk about this uh, deeper because I know uh, we wouldn't have enough time to go extremely in depth uh, on this, but if there are any questions or comments, uh, please uh, raise them. Uh, so the first translation uh, from the first century Aramaic O thou from whom the breath of life comes, who fills all realms of sound, light, and vibration, may your light be experienced in my utmost holiest. Your heavenly domain approaches. Let your will come true in the universe, which is all that vibrates, just as on this materially dense earth. Give us wisdom, understanding assistance for our daily need. Detach the fetters of faults that bind us like we let go the guilt of others. Let us not be lost in superficial things like materialism and common temptations, but let us be freed from that what keeps us off from our true purpose. From you comes the all working will, the lively strength to act. The song that beautifies all and renews itself from age to age. Sealed in trust, faith in truth, I confirm with my entire being. Then a second translation O birther father mother of the cosmos focus your light within us make it useful create your reign of unity now 
through our fiery hearts and willing hands, help us love beyond our ideas and sprout acts of compassion for all creatures. Animate the earth within us. We then feel the wisdom underneath supporting all. Untangle the knots within so that we can mend our hearts, simple ties to each other. Don't let surface things delude us, but free us from what holds us back from our true purpose. Out of you, the astonishing fire, returning light and sound to the cosmos, amen. So. Yes, sir. That, I think the, um, the version that you read if it's okay with everyone else, I would definitely like to um, especially discuss the second version, but I would like to do it um, maybe next Monday. And the reason I say that is because I don't want us to get started you know, and do it in depth mm -hmm. on, um, unless there is someone to the contrary who would like to uh, do it, to, you know, who sees it differently than I see it in terms of our discussion. Okay. What do you think about that? Say it again, you were just breaking up. I said, what do you guys, what do you guys think about it? it? Sounds good to me. I agree. Yes. Okay. So, so and really, go ahead. And it was Matthew 24 and 6. No, okay. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. You're welcome. You're going to make me think I know something after a while. Um, so so we'll, uh, we'll discuss this next week, guys. Okay. Okay. All right, Sheldon, got that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, well. Uh, is there anything else on your mind or are there any other questions on your mind that does not relate uh, to what Sheldon just read so that we can leave you with um, your heart and mind being clear? I, I, do, I do have one question for Sheldon, if you don't mind me asking this question now. The first version you said was first century? Yeah. Uh, when was that uh, one written? Uh, yeah, it says uh, translated into first uh, century um, uh, Aramaic. Okay. So, okay. Anything else, guys? Thank you. I've enjoyed the evening. Thank you. Yeah, I did too. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Thank you guys for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. Have a good night. Thank everybody. you all. Bye. Have a good night, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. Okay. Good night.